Wait, 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 what? I have to arrange my own clinicals? Where do I start? What does that mean? Is this you? Does this sound familiar to you? If you're a nursing student or you are considering going back to nurse practitioner school, please stay and watch this entire video. I have information for you that you definitely need to know. So stick around in this video because I'm going to show you what all nurse practitioner students should know about clinical placements. The real story, the one that they don't tell you. So if you are a nurse practitioner student or you're considering going back to MP school, stick around to the end of this. Let's get into it. Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy, your academic nurse. And today we're gonna to talk about all those things, clinical placements. What is the behind the scenes information that you need to have before you make the decision to go back to nurse practitioner school? Or if you're in nurse practitioner school now, what do you need to know to get a head start to make sure that you aren't surprised about your clinical placement process at your school. First thing to know is there are two types of clinical placements. The first type of clinical placement is that type that the school or the program arranges for you. The second type of clinical placement is student driven. And what does that mean? That means that you, the student, are responsible for finding your own clinical site. I know it seems like, what? How's that even a thing? Well, it's a thing, trust me, it's definitely a thing. And also, students find this experience somewhat incredibly stressful at times. Incredibly stressful. In fact, I've had many students in like a stressful cortisol driven anxiety frenzy in my office or on the phone with me or on email in, in tears and upset because they just didn't have some of the background information. So today I want to fix that for you. Now that we know that there are two different types of clinical placements, the student driven type and the clinical program type, let's talk about the type that the clinical program places first. Good intel is always a good place to start, right? So when you are thinking about going to a program, if you were already in a program and you don't have this information yet, you certainly can ask. But if you're considering an online or an in-person nurse practitioner program, you need to find this out. You need to find out if they make these clinical placements for you. Sometimes it's as simple as a phone call to the student affairs office. Other times student affairs might not really know how the clinical placement part works and they think just because the school has affiliations with certain clinical sites that the school will place students. That's not always the case. So I recommend you go a step further. Get on that website, find the concentration or specialty director and email that person directly. So when you email them, make sure you ask the question, does your program place students clinically? It's really important. It's really important that you ask and make sure that you also follow that up with a caveat. Do you expect students to find their own clinical placements, their own clinical sites, and their own clinical preceptors? That's a super important distinction. So make sure you're asking that question and getting the answer to that question. Now, talking about those programs that do say that they place students, let's talk about something that happens a lot. So they'll have a process where the student is involved, and this sounds great, right? So the student gets to come in and gets to say, I really want to go to Happy Hospital. And in Happy Hospital, I know Dr. Frank. And Dr. Frank at Happy Hospital has said that he will precept me. He has no problems with that. And so you go into the program with that expectation that you're going to be able to go to Happy Hospital and have Dr. Frank as your preceptor. Not so fast. Think about this for a second. Many times students come back in and they're super upset when they find out, number one, maybe they've picked a rotation that's not appropriate for them. For instance, if they picked a rotation that is more suited to an acute care environment or a primary care environment, and they are in a program for the opposite. So the student really has to make sure that what they want to do clinically is congruent with what their program says is necessary. That's the first part that can cause a lot of angst. The second part is you might not be able to get an agreement. So there is something called an affiliation agreement, an educational affiliation agreement. What is that? Well, basically that's the contract that allows the student to go to the clinical site. So the student can only go to the clinical site if there is a contract in place. And to further complicate it, sometimes the preceptor might work for a staffing company that provides staff to the hospital setting or to the clinic. What happens then? Well, in that case, there has to be a three-way affiliation agreement. Three-way affiliation agreement. 
Those can be a nightmare to negotiate. They can take six to eight months before they even get off the ground, if they're ever even negotiated. So it's super important that you understand as a student that even though you want to go to Happy Hospital, you might not be able to get an affiliation agreement, even if they are ready and willing to precept you. Also, you need to find out what about the preceptor? So does the preceptor work directly for that entity or will you need two separate contracts or a three-way. Very confusing. I will definitely spend some more time on that in a future video, but for right now, just you need to keep that in mind if you are trying to locate a preceptor. The other piece that sometimes causes students a lot of great angst is if they have chosen Dr. Frank from Happy Hospital and the college says, you know what, that's a great site. We already actually have a student assigned to that site to that preceptor, so sorry, you, you can't have it. And so you've spent this whole time thinking that you found a site that this preceptor is willing to take you and both things can be true. Simultaneously, it can also be true that that site has already been promised to another student. Keep that in mind as well. So there are all these pieces that you need to make sure that you fully understand before you get your hopes up about going to a site. Now, sometimes the nursing program may actually place you somewhere else and you didn't have any input on where you're placed. So you might be placed in somewhere that is not convenient for you. So you need to understand what the policies surrounding clinical placements might be. Does your program say that they can place anywhere in the country? Do they say they can place anywhere that your license will extend? For instance, if you have a, a, the type of license that's compact so you can go to multiple different states, they might find a placement for you in another state. Be careful of that, especially with online programs. With programs that are state bound or in-state programs that don't technically place or typically place outside side of the state, they still can place you anywhere they want. And believe me, there's a long distance between Pensacola and Miami. So just be sure that unless you're in Rhode Island, the state school that you choose to go to, understand that you might be placed somewhere that's anywhere within that area and it's going to be up to you to provide your own means of transportation, housing, any of those things if you need that while you're there. So I know that I'm painting a little bit of a dismal picture, but I just want you to understand what those possibilities are before you get into a situation where the where the nursing program places you clinically. Next point to consider, and this is a doozy. Where do you live? Are you a resident of the state where your nursing program is? If you're not, you have special considerations. So there are many different points that you have to make sure that you are able to cross. Number one, the nursing program itself. Is it accredited in your state or does it need to be approved by your board of nursing? So that's a whole different point. I covered that in a previous video. I'll link to that down below in the description, but make sure that your nursing program is actually covered in the state that you live. Next, make sure that you understand what those requirements for licensure are, right? So I know for sure some programs have very, very strict requirements and they will not allow you to have clinicals with people that are what they consider outside of your scope of practice. Make sure you know what that is because if at the end of the day, if you're unable to get licensed because they don't accept the type of clinicals that you had, that's on you. And you have to make sure that you go back to school or do whatever it is that you do to get the right clinicals. Next, a lot of students come to me and say, hey, I found this placement service. All I have to do is just like sign up with them and they'll find a preceptor for me and a site for me. Again, this one gives me a lot of heartburn because a lot of these sites are predatory. In fact, in my previous role as assistant dean for clinical affairs, I had to issue a cease and desist to one company that called imposed as a nursing faculty to get information from our legal department about our contracting process. They're predatory in many cases. Some cases they may actually help. I don't have all those answers, but I can tell you that they cost an exorbitant amount of money. Over $3,000 is typical of what they charge for just a normal, ordinary 180 hour clinical in one semester. That's minimum. I've seen that charge go way higher, especially for those hard to get specialties like ob gyne neuro, etc. So be sure that you know what you're getting into before you contract one of these companies. Also, many programs have gotten wise to this and they don't accept those at all. So if they find out that you've contracted with a preceptor with one of these companies to arrange a preceptor in a clinical site for you, 
they won't take it. So you might be at a whole heck of a lot of money. So just be very careful. I can also tell you as a nurse practitioner, I'm often sent recruitment advertisements from these companies. And I've followed up on a couple just out of curiosity to see what they tell me. And a couple are quite concerning. In fact, one said, there's really not much to do. All you have to do is just sign the paperwork and you can just tell the student to go home, but it's a great side hustle. That's not quality education to me. And in that case, I wouldn't want you as a student to have that kind of experience too. It's not going to help you take care of patients. It's not going to help you pass your boards. So beware of these predatory services and make sure that if you do contract with one of these companies, that it is number one, approved by your school. And number two, that you have a quality, quality experience. Also, make sure you can afford it. It's super expensive and student loans does not cover any type of cost like that. The next point is timing. Timing is crucial in this process. Like I said, the more you know, the better from the outset. So if you can do as much intel, reconnaissance, stalking Facebook groups, whatever you have to do to find out what's going on, what is the real story at that program where you're considering or where you're presently going, the more information you have, the better. If they have any kind of orientation once you start, any kind of clinical orientation and tell you exactly how they want their process done, pay attention. Follow those steps line by line by line. Do everything that they say in the order they say to do it so your experience won't be delayed. Start working those contacts. I know I said it's sometimes disappointing when students come into a program and they have a preceptor already lined up and it turns out not to be appropriate. Just find out what is appropriate. Call that same person, that concentration or special director and say, hey, what kind of what kind of clinicals do I need to have, right? And so you can start getting a head start on recruiting, finding out where those preceptors are, and perhaps even engaging some of them. In the next video, I'm going to talk all about how to approach preceptors, how to make sure that you're getting the information that you need to have, and um, how to land that perfect preceptor. So you can come back for that one. All right, so what's the bottom line here? Educate yourself. Do your homework. Find out what your program requires. Find out if your program helps place or does the placement. Prepare yourself for what that means for where you might actually end up with your clinicals. Make sure that you are asking all those questions, reaching out for help, don't be afraid to reach out and say, I don't understand or I need to know what type of clinical placements that I'm going to need, how many hours of each kind of rotation. That way you can get a head start on locating preceptors and clinical sites. If you have a question about something on an affiliation list, don't hesitate to reach out and let them know. Finally, if there is something that wasn't covered here or you have a question about anything that I went over, drop me a comment down below. Or if you found value, what was your aha moment? When did you sit back and go, oh, that's a great point. I really need to make sure that I write that down. What was your aha moment today? Any other questions you have, drop me a comment down below. Make sure you check out the description for all those links that I mentioned. And at the end of this, you can watch that first video that I talked about with how to find an online program or the next video, which will link you directly to how to land the perfect preceptor. If you found value in this today, please click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much from your academic nurse. Bye. Oh,